Welcome to Sir Majesty Easy World Science channel. Nice having you. Please, if you have not subscribed to this my channel, please subscribe to this channel and share this video. In this video, I'll be handling the chemical kinetics. The chemical kinetics, otherwise known as the reaction kinetics. In a common term, we call it the rate of reaction. So reaction kinetics deals with the study and investigation of the properties and the factors that influences the rate of chemical reaction. First of all, what is chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is a change in which an element or a compound is converted or transformed into another element or compound and the one that is being transformed are the reactants and the one that is gotten from the transformation are the products. Now, the rate of a chemical reaction should be the speed of the reaction. That is, the rate at which the reactants are converted to products. That is, the kinetics, the motion, the speed with which the reactant particles are converted to product particles. In other words, we can say that rate of chemical reaction is proportional to the decrease in concentration of the reactants and also proportional to increase in concentration of the product. And this is what we call rate of chemical reaction. And then rate can only be measured by considering volume and mass produced or mass converted over time. So rates usually deal with, first of all, let me write the topic. The topic is chemical kinetics. And there we are dealing with what? Rate of a chemical reaction. So, <clears throat> we talked about that rates can only be assessed by measuring mass over time or volume over time. As far as reaction is concerned, it can be mass of product over time of production or mass of reactant converted over time of conversion or volume of product converted over time of the conversion. So that means when we talk about rate, rate can be seen as mass over time or rather volume over time. Now, this should not be confused with uh, thermodynamics, chemical thermodynamics, which deals with the heat changes around, talking about the direction without mentioning actually what alters the rate of the chemical reaction. Now, in this case, if you are to measure your speed, remember, you are going to tell us the distance you covered and the time you covered that distance. But in chemical kinetics, we are talking about the progress of the reaction and the time it takes for such progress to be made. And you can only assess this by measuring the volume or the mass produced or the volume or the mass converted. Do you understand that now? So if you want to check the rate at which your company is working well, you will have to check the products they, are, they, are, they were able to produce or give out within a day, a month, a week. Do you understand? They may tell you that this company is running on 30 tons or 30 barrels of oil per month. So there must be a time. If they can now apply mob mechanism and they intensify their production to move from 30 barrels to 40, that means the rate of production is getting higher. Now, generally, let us see those factors that affect the rate of chemical reaction. There are many factors, but I will list the major ones that are very, very key, important. So those factors are, we're going to take a look at factors affecting the rates of chemical reaction. First, before we discuss all this, we have to see how these factors really affect the rate of chemical reaction. How will these factors affect the rate of chemical reaction? In two or three ways. One way is to increase the energy of the reactant particles, to affect the kinetic energy of the reactant particles. Then secondly, is to affect the activation energy of the reaction. The effect on the enthalpy of the reactant particle, the energy content of a substance is called the enthalpy. That is, the, these factors will either affect the enthalpy of the reactant particles or rather affect the heat content. 
Then secondly, it can also affect the activation energy of the reaction. These factors will also have effect on the number of effective collisions of the reactant particles. So these are the three major ways that these factors can alter the rates of chemical reaction. So for us to understand this, I've defined enthalpy as the energy content or the heat content of a substance. The heat content of substances vary from one substance to another and that's why nature of reactants can affect the rate. The energy content of a given reactant is not the same with another reactant. So then we talk about the next one which is activation energy. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that must be supplied such that reactant particles will be converted to product particles. In other words, it is the energy barrier that must be overcome before the reactant particles are converted to product particles. In other words, they are the minimum energy required to break the bonds in the reactant particles, converting it to the new bonds in the product particles. So during chemical reaction, we deal with bond breaking and bond making. In other words, bond breaking and bond formation. So there must be enough energy to break the already existing bond and establish a new bond in the new particles called the product. Then the other one says the effective collision. The effective collision is actually the collisions that is enough to break the bonds holding the reactant particles. So these factors will affect the rate of chemical reaction by either affecting these three things I've mentioned, which are either the energy content of the reactant particles, the activation energy, and also the effective, the number of effective collisions. So I will take each factor and explain it in details. Remember to subscribe and share this video. You are on with Sir Majesty Easy World, and I'm also available for you in case if you need extra private coaching in chemistry, biology, chemistry related courses, and biology related courses also. We handle you even in mathematics. So now, I want to take the nature of reactant particles. The nature of reactant particles affects the rate of chemical reaction because the heat content of reactant particles varies. The heat content varies from one reactant particle to another. Some substances are more reactive than the other. So if you bring more reactive substances together, they will have a faster rate of reaction. That is why we talk about if you have a, a, a substance whose atoms ionizes easily, such atoms react faster than another atom that doesn't easily ionize. So if there is a reaction involving group three elements, for example, and then group one elements, the group one element, the, the energy content is higher. They are more reactive than the group three. The alkali metals, that is the sodium, potassium, the cesium, they are all more reactive than the corresponding group three more reactive than even carbon itself. So a reaction that involves sodium and a reaction that involves carbon, which is in group four, that of sodium will be more vigorous. The rate will be faster because the energy content of that of sodium is more in the sense that sodium is more reactive than the so-called carbon. So to bring this to your notice is that in practical, if you react iron filing with hydrochloric acid or dilute HCl, there will be a slow effervescence of hydrogen gas. Why? Because iron is a bit lower in the series. It's a bit closer to hydrogen in the activity series, of course. Then, but if you replace the iron, iron filing with sodium metal, the reaction becomes vigorous and may get out of hand that it might even catch fire. If you replace it with potassium, it becomes more faster because of the fact that potassium is more reactive than sodium. So nature of reactant has been explained halfway. Then another way to explain this nature of reactant is that, for example, if you bring calcium carbonate and react it with any acid, there will be effervescent, which will liberate colorless or dullest gas, which turns lime water and milky. That means carbon four oxide is liberated. But there are some acid and uh, carbonate you will mix, the reaction will not be fast. It will start and stop immediately. So what do I mean here? If you react HCl and limestone, the reaction rate will be very fast at a stage start declining because generally the rate of reaction decreases with time. No matter what, the rate of reaction decreases with time. Reason is because 
the reactant particles are being consumed, which lessens the number of effective collisions and this slows down. It's a natural phenomenon. You can't keep, the speed cannot keep increasing, no. It's just like a curve. When it starts, it rises, then becomes stable and start declining because the reactant particles are being consumed during the process, lessening the concentration. Now, bringing the other way around, when I say HCl and limestone, the reaction will progress, like I said. Climb very high, the effervescent will be more, and it starts reducing until eventually there will be no more effervescent. But if you replace this with, if it becomes limestone versus H2SO4, the reaction will start and stop. Reason is because the product formed, which is calcium sulfate, is insoluble in the acid and stops further reaction. So if you have to react these two things, you see where nature happens. The first example I gave is, if you use ion versus HCl, the reaction is a bit slow. But when you use sodium or use zinc versus HCl versus HCl, the reaction rate will be lowest here, but fastest here. This is medium. That's, this should be in the middle, intermediate, in the sense that the most reactive is sodium. So the rate of reaction will be lowest here because in the activity series, we discover that iron is the lower one in the series. We have the, the potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, Tin, uh, lead, hydrogen, copper, mercury, silver, and gold. You see where iron is, is lower, but see where zinc is. Zinc is higher than iron, while sodium is highest. So that is it. Then another one I said is if we have HCl versus CaCO3 to give you. CaCl2 plus CO2 plus water, of course. Balance, there should be two here. The reaction rate here will obey the normal rate curve. We grow, start stable, and start declining because of the consumption. But if you replace this acid with H2SO4, the reaction will start and immediately slow down rapidly. That's calcium trioxocarbonate 4. It will start, of course, giving you calcium tetraoxosulfate 6, which is insoluble, then water plus CO2. This type will just start and immediately fall. It will not rise. The reason is because of the nature of the product equally. When we are talking about the nature of the reactant, I think I'm equally uh, discovering another thing. The nature of the product can also affect the rate of reaction. Yes, because it's obvious here. Here should be the nature of the reactant. But here, because of this product form, calcium tetraoxosulfate 6 is insoluble and will shield the penetration of the H2SO4 from this, and that stops the reaction. This is the same thing applicable to some metals that are very much protective, like aluminium, of course, when exposed to air, forms a shield and stops further reaction which means the nature of product should also be included here. It affects also the rate of reaction. If the product formed forms a barrier where the reactant particle will no more have access to the, pro, uh, to the, to the, react, to the second reactant particle, it slows the reaction down and eventually stops it. So that is it for the nature of reactant. Then type of bond involved is also considered here. For the... Reaction that involves the formation of covalent bond, the reaction rate is relatively slower than the one that involves the formation of a ionic bond. Okay? We have discussed the nature of reactants. The next is going to be the catalyst. The catalyst 
Catalyst, by definition, is actually any substance that alters the rate of chemical reaction and remains qualitatively and quantitatively unchanged at the end of the reaction. Such a thing is what we call a catalyst. Remember, don't say that catalysts are substances that speedens up the rate of chemical reaction. No, you are being one-sided and biased. You are defining only positive catalysts if you define like this. A catalyst will alter the rate of reaction. It will either slow it down or make it faster and therefore we correctly define catalyst as any substance that alters the rate of chemical reaction and remains qualitatively and quantitatively unchanged meaning it will not affect the product it doesn't take part actually in the reaction it cannot start a reaction rather it, it can only affect the speed of the reaction it might slow it down it might make it faster and this implies that we have positive catalyst and negative catalyst and there is nothing actually that we can single out and call catalyst in science no but most catalysts are found among the transition elements because they have variable oxidation states so the elements in the transition uh, group that is in the d block in the periodic table are usually cata catalyst and their compounds are also catalysts such as manganese 2 oxide manganese 4 cobalt nickel platinum you know Iron, finely divided iron, these are the common catalysts we have. But apart from them, any other substance can also act as what? A catalyst. It is not a must, it must be the transition element, but they are the most common catalysts we use. So a catalyst in a given reaction can act as a reactant in another reaction. That is why we don't have one particular thing we refer to as catalyst. For example, manganese 4 oxide will speeden up the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide to yield water and oxygen, but it will not affect the product. Therefore, in the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, manganese 4 oxide is a catalyst. But in the production of chlorine from hydrochloric acid, manganese 4 oxide reacts with HCl no longer as a catalyst. That manganese 4 oxide there is, is there as now oxidizing agent so that something is a catalyst in a given reaction doesn't mean it will remain to be a catalyst in all the reaction wait a minute have you heard about the majestic table it was designed and recommended by some majesty himself yes the amazing thing about the majestic periodic table is that it provides a clear and colorful classification of elements from P block metals to metalloids to liquid metals. It also shows the boiling and melting points of all the elements. It also has the unique feeling of electrons in the shells of each element. the easy learning and teaching of chemistry in schools, in universities, secondary schools, in research institutes. So this majestic periodic table, On demand and special demand, as you can see that space there highlighted, that is where you can include the name of your school or if you are dedicating it to anybody, you can write there because you, you can print it to any size you like in a majestic size the resolution will never be affected so it took me about three months to design and provide these information but thank god the table is here what made me to design this is that i discovered that these tables i see in the internet the one i see in the market they are not as informative as i want and then some of them are not updated some still retain the fact that we have there are like some still see uh, promentum has not been radiated, so I might see them as uh, artificial element, but it is still is a, is a naturally occurring element, of course. So there are some modifications that this table has, has been made to include, and that makes it majestic. This is super majestic. Much love. So we have defined catalyst and given the proper introduction of a catalyst. And catalysts are usually written on top of the arrow of a given reaction. Meaning, if we have such reaction, 
if A plus B reacts to give you C plus D, and then E acts as a catalyst, the E is on top of the arrow, indicating that it is neither a product nor a reactant. So that's how we write it. Now, let's now bring you close to how catalyst alters the chemical kinetics. How does it alter the rate at which the particles are converted from reactant to product? Catalyst alters the activation energy of a given reaction. Catalyst alters the rates of a given reaction by affecting the activation energy, either by making it higher or lower, either by raising it or bringing it back. So, taking you back to what I defined as activation energy, we need energy profile diagram to illustrate how catalyst affects the rate of chemical reaction. Okay. Here we have such graph. This is for endothermic reaction. Where here is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, eventually 16. So tracing this, see them, and tracing this. You have to label this to make it clearer for you. So, from here, from here to here, is what we call the activation energy. We call this the what? The activation energy. The activation energy, which is mathematically... On top is here, we call it the activation complex. Here is referred to as activation complex, which is the peak. And then mathematically, the activation energy is actually, here is our what? From here to here is the enthalpy of the reactant, where here is A plus B to give us C plus D. So over here is the heat of the what? The enthalpy of the reactant. The enthalpy, that's the heat content of the reactant particles. While over here is the heat content of the product particles. Here is the heat content of the product. So, for us to understand what activation energy means, Activation energy, we say, is the energy barrier or the minimum amount of energy that must be supplied before the reactant particles are converted to product particles. And mathematically, is the difference between the energy, is the difference between the activation complex and the enthalpy of the reactant. Enthalpy of the reactant, not enthalpy of the product. So the activation complex minus the energy of the reactant gives you activation energy. So, activation energy is equal to, here, the activation complex is what? 16 minus the enthalpy of the reactor, which is 6, such that our activation energy here becomes what? 10, usually in kilojoule, per mole, whichever. So, we have 10 kilojoule as our activation energy. Now, a given reaction, this particular reaction, can only occur when you supply 10 kilojoules of energy. And such collisions of the particles that will supply such energy is what we call the effective collisions. Collisions that are enough to break the bonds holding the reactant particles. So, 10 kilojoules must be supplied before A and B is converted to C plus D. If you supply 9 kilojoules, A and B remains what it is. There won't be any change or transformation, and therefore, there won't be any chemical reaction. Now, what a catalyst will do for you is to either take this activation energy higher or lower, either to raise it or to bring it back. So, I'm going to draw the energy profile for catalyzed reaction and uncatalyzed. There are two possibilities. Yeah. There are two possibilities. 
the two possibilities are the one raising it and the one lowering it what matters is that this one on a full line on a thick line is the uncatalyzed while this one is the word catalyzed why here is still the word catalyzed so catalyzed can come in form of the one taking the complex higher or lowering it so this what can only do this once on the dots is nothing but a catalyst so a catalyst can affect the rate of chemical reaction either by taking the activation complex higher or lowering the activation complex in the first case here in case of uh, the one i'm labeling x this one is y y z is uncatalyzed that's the normal rate without catalyst this is the way to proceed but if you add catalyst x is a positive catalyst because it lowers the activation energy by lowering the activation complex while y here is a negative catalyst because it increases the activation energy by increasing the activation complex so if you take these traces here will now become our 18 kilojoule for example so now checking this catalyst can affect the rate of reaction we solved the uncatalyzed as 10 kilojoule but if you have, uh, apply a positive catalyst the Activation energy will now be, you trace it, because the complex will be lowered from 16 to 14, such that the activation energy will now be for the catalyzed, positively catalyzed reaction, is going to give us exactly what? 14 minus the heat content of the reactant remains 6. is unchanging. It doesn't change. So what we have here now is 14 minus 6. And 14 minus 6 will give us 8, if I'm correct. Yeah, this is going to give us 8 on the door. So you see that if you are told to supply, to push a mass of 10 kg and push a mass of 8 kg, for example, you will know that you spend less energy in pushing this and this job will be easier done. And what made it easier for you? The catalyst lowered it from becoming 10 to becoming what? Eight. And that is what catalyst does for positive catalyst. Then for negative catalyst, what happened here is that it raised it from the 16 to 18. So the energy, the activation energy of the same catalyzed will still be, but this time around is negative catalysis. That is, this Y is used when you don't want this reaction to proceed. So negative catalysts are mostly used as preservatives to inhibit and stop some reactions or slow it down and then keep the quality of that product as it progresses. So in most preservatives, you are advised to use a negative catalyst to stop the undesirable reactions. So in this case, you are making the activation energy higher, the catalyzed, we have catalyzed for X and catalyzed for Y. Catalyzed for X, here is 8 kg. Then catalyzed for Y will now be 18 minus 6, which will be 12 kg. This one, you are making the job harder for the person. If you are told to push 10 kg and you are finding it a bit difficult, when the mass increases to actually 12 kg, that makes it more difficult for you. So negative catalyst slows down the rate of reaction, while positive catalyst increases the rate of reaction. But all the same, whether negative or positive, both affects the rate of what reaction. So the catalyst as a factor affecting the rate of reaction has been explained very, very well. To use the opportunity to teach you what exam body might ask you. They will ask you what's the energy change of the catalyst. You see how I solved it here. If they drew X for you, you solve it this way. What is the energy for the uncatalyzed? You solve it this way, which is 10 kg. They might not ask you what they might label here x label here if they tell you x here you tell them the heat content of the what reactant then another remarkable thing that we need to note is this the difference between the energy of the product and the energy of the reactant and that is what we call enthalpy change heat change which is heat of product minus heat of reactant considering this energy profile diagram c plus d the energy content of c plus d here is 10 while the energy content of a plus b here is 6 
which means the energy of the reactant is less than the energy of the product. And if this happens, the reaction becomes endothermic. So in that case, this is H equal to 10 minus 6, which will give you automatically 4 and is a positive eh, number. The opposite is the case. So the energy profile diagram I showed here is for endothermic reaction. That is, it means that extra energy, extra 4 kilojoules of energy is absorbed from the surrounding, which makes the reaction vessel to feel colder to touch because the reactant takes in that heat from the surrounding to produce the product because the energy content is 10, while the energy started from 6. Therefore, there have to be absorption of extra 4 kilojoules. But what if I twist it this way? Yes. The reverse reaction of this will be automatically the exothermic, the energy profile diagram for exothermic. Where here is now 10, we keep the 10 constant. Then, going down, giving us now 6. Here becomes, if you have such reaction, if we keep the label in A plus B and keep C plus D again, it means that the heat change is still the difference between the energy of the product and the energy of the reactant. So here is your heat change. While from here to here is your activation energy. Remember, from here to here, is, it doesn't signify anything. The difference between the activation complex and the energy of the product doesn't signify anything at all. So take note, please. This one is nothing. It's always the difference between the activation complex and the energy of the product. Now, heat change here to show is this is an exothermic reaction. This is exothermic reaction. Why this here is endothermic. Whether exo or endo, what I thought were about catalyzed and not catalyzed remains the same. But what the, what's the difference? It's just the heat change. So heat change here should be, this is the HP, heat content of the product, because C plus D now is 6, minus heat content of the reactant, which is 10. This time around, the heat change is negative 4 minus 4 which means 4 kilojoules of energy have to be liberated has to be lost in the surrounding and that's why the reaction vessel is hot to touch in exothermic uh, reactions so exothermic reactions the ones that liberate heat and heat change is usually what negative but if they draw the same thing here this is for catalyzed then another one usually in dotted line this is also for catalyzed so we move to the next factor which is Temperature. Permit me to clean this. The effect of temperature on the rate of chemical reaction. Temperature affects the rate of chemical reaction by affecting the effective collisions and the heat content of the reactant particles. So the rate of a chemical reaction is automatically affected by increase or decrease in temperature because of the reduction or the increase in the number of effective collisions or increase in the kinetic energy or decrease in the kinetic energy of the reactant particles. Okay, now, as we all know generally that if you can take any aerated drink, for example, and then put it in an open flame, maybe you take a fizzy drink, maybe any of them, you see them, put it in an open flame, maybe the bottled one, not the one in the pet. You are increasing the temperature, the kinetic energy of the gases inside it, and the number of collisions, the gases will be colliding on the walls of the bottle of such fizz drink, and eventually will explode. You have created what? A bomb. So, if you increase the temperature of a chemical reaction, generally you are increasing the rate of that reaction. It has been observed that the rate of reaction is doubled for every rise in temperature by 10 degrees. If the rate is taking 3 minutes to produce a given amount 
and you increase the temperature by 10, it will take one and a half minutes. That means it has doubled the rate. Remember, the rate of reaction is doubled when such thing happens at a lesser time, a lesser period of time. But when it takes more time, it means that the rate is slower. Take note of this. If it takes me five minutes to finish up this whole class, and it takes another person two minutes to finish up this whole class on chemical kinetics, the person that spent two minutes to finish up the whole thing on chemical kinetics have a faster teaching rate than me that used five minutes. Okay, so temperature increases the rate of reaction by increasing the number of effective collisions of the reactant towards particles. So in this case, I've just told you the general conclusion that increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction by if there is a rise in 10 degrees in temperature it doubles the rate of the reaction now what do we use to demonstrate the effect of temperature on the rate of chemical reaction i will carry out the experimental part of the chemical kinetics on a separate video but the reaction between dilute hydrochloric acid and sodium trioxothiosulfate 6 that is sodium thiosulfate 6 is what we use to assess the rates of chemical reaction based on changing their temperatures. So in this particular experiment, remember the HCl and the sodium thiosulfate produces a white amorphous or white yellowish amorphous sulfur which forms cloudy something inside the beaker. So you place it on top of uh, a cross or anything and observe the time taking. You do it for 100, you do it for actually 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50, every 10, 10 degrees you do it. See that the rate is almost doubled in each case. Stay subscribed to watch these experiments on chemical kinetics. So that's it for the rate of chemical reaction and the temperature changes. So increase in temperature increases the number of effective collision, thereby increasing the rate at which the bonds holding the reactant particles are broken, converting them to the product world particles. The inversely, the lower the temperature, the lower the rate of reaction. In application, this is why your refrigerator acts as a preservative. Why? Because refrigerator lowers the temperature, which slows down the rate of microbial action, the rate of metabolism in the microorganisms. Not that most times those microorganisms are killed. Rather, the temperature makes it, makes it difficult for them to keep progressing some of the reactions that will bring about the spoilage of your food is stopped because of very low temperature so lowering the temperature slows down the rate of chemical reaction and that what refrigerator does by slowing down the rate of reaction stops your food from spoiling because spoilage of food is actually a chemical reaction of course some might be a product of fermentation some of course some of the bacteria are actually the the the, the lactic acid uh, the lactobacillus acidophilus, which is common, actually convert some of the sugary substances there to ethanol, eventually to ethanoic acid, which makes your soup go sour because acids have sour taste. So any traces of sugar or any something sugary there will be oxidized eventually to acid by some bacteria. But when you lower the temperature, such bacteria will no longer continue. Such reactions of the oxidation and the reduction processes will be slowed down. So, temperature affects the rate of reaction. So, in industry, you are always advised to increase the temperature to, in order to increase the rate of reaction. But, due to, if a reaction is reversible, you now consider if such a reaction is exothermic, you are advised not to increase the temperature so high because increase in temperature inversely disfavors the formation or the rate of exothermic reactions. So that one is discussed in another video which is already here on this channel on chemical equilibrium. So endeavor to watch that to see the effect of changes in temperature on the equilibrium position of a reversible reaction. Now we move to the next factor which is concentration. Concentration has a great effect. Concentration increases the number of particles colliding making the particles to be overcrowded that is com a crowded particles in a small space leads to more collisions so the increase in concentration 
increases the rate of chemical reaction because it increases the number of effective collisions which leads to more destruction of bonds and more formation of new bonds so Remember, all we have been discussing, we are touching the energy content of the reactants, touching the activation energy, touching the effective collisions. All these factors does that. So, taking you back to the law of mass action, which states that the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the active masses of the reactants. The active masses, we write the, reaction, uh, the rate equation, will tell us that if you have a reaction A plus B, to so give us C plus D, where here, is x and y that's the coefficient for the order of the reaction why a and b will take it as the molarities of the reactant a and reactant b so the rates of reaction for this particular one should be the rate of reaction should be taken as a the molarity of a raised to power the order that's the coefficient which is x multiply by the b all over so this one we're going to put directly proportional such that when we want to remove the direct proportion we put k so the kr which is the rate constant will now be the molarity of a raised to power x multiplied by the molarity of b raised to power y so in this case it shows that the higher the concentration of this because if the number here becomes larger the product the pro the answer to this will be more will be more so the reaction rate will be faster if the active masses of the reactant becomes more so the law of mass action invariably tells us that the higher the concentration the higher the rate of chemical reaction reason is because of higher what is because of a higher number of collisions higher number of effective uh, collisions so in experimental procedure you can use the reaction between magnesium and the, actually the hydrochloric acid of different concentrations to measure the rate of reaction or experimentally react calcium carbonate with hcl hcl of different concentration keeping the mass of the calcium carbonate constant thereby taking the time or taking note of the time it takes for the effervescent to start and stop in that experiment, you will understand more of what I'm saying. But remember, you can use magnesium and dilute HCl of different concentrations and calcium, that is limestone, calcium carbonate, and also dilute HCl of different concentrations. Then thirdly, you can also use potassium iodide acidified with H2SO4 and then a starch indicator added to it with hydrogen peroxide. So the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and acidified potassium iodide with starch indicator is also used to study the effect of concentration on the rate of chemical reaction. So the higher the concentration of the reactant particles, the faster the rate of reaction. The lower the concentration, the slower the rate of chemical reaction. But unfortunately, experimentally, I discovered something right back about three years ago in 2020 i'm recording this in 2023 right now but in 2020 where i was working on the production of uh, lead 2000 nitrate 5 yeah the reactants i needed in the production and the purification of lead 2000 nitrate 5 we endeavor to watch that video also here at Sir majesty easy world science channel i was faced to react there are three methods i use but this one that concerns what i want to say the reaction between nitric acid and then lead metal. The lead metal, I discovered that when the nitric acid is highly concentrated, the lead metal, the evolution and the, the rate of the reaction is very slow. But when I dilute it, the rate becomes faster. Imagine, this is real. So what can we say to this? You, you, you try to find out why this is, but this is real. And it, it do not only happen to that. There are other conditions, but this is the one I can remember. Let me repeat myself. I say, I discovered that when I use the raw, about 63% of the HL or 65 or 70% of the HNO3 against lead metal, there was no visible effervescence. But when I diluted the acid, the reaction rate became faster. So it's opposing what we all know, according to the law of mass action, that the higher the rate, that, that the higher the concentration, the higher the rate of chemical reaction. But here, I'm diluting more and I'm getting a faster rate. If you have a possible explanation, use the comment box, of course. And I know there are other things. I'll discuss that. We have what we call in water reactions. Then 
we might say this based on nature of reactants, but it cannot be the same because it's affecting the concentration. Okay? So, we move to the next factor, which is actually the physical state of the reactants, of course. We have solid, liquid, and gas. Some really homogeneous reactions happens at a faster rate than heterogeneous reactions. What do I mean by homogeneous reactions? Homo means uniform. Reactions in which the reactants are in the same state. The rate of reaction is faster. Then when you have a reaction where the reactants are in different states, we call it heterogeneous. So the rate of reaction there is a bit what? Slower. So the physical state of such reactant particle can affect the rate of what reaction so homogeneous reactions are faster relatively more than heterogeneous reaction except on water reactions we observe in, in some organic chemistry aspect of organic chemical uh, organic chemistry so but that will be a different video altogether if i'll have time for that but just know that rate is fastest in gases then followed by liquid and least in solids so the state of matter actually affects the rate of reaction where well, i use homogeneous and heterogeneous homogeneous processes are faster than heterogeneous because there will be thermal motion a kind of uniform motion there will be more collisions because they are in the same phase they are almost in the same state so reactions in the same phase are faster than reactions in different phases we take a look at number six which is surface area we're going to discuss this well Surface area. What is surface area? Surface area is the area available for chemical reaction to take place. Just the surface that is available to make contact with other reactants. That's what we mean by surface area. Then, the larger the surface area, the higher or the faster the rate of chemical reaction. The reason is because there will be more particles that are in contact because it is only particles that are in contact that will react not particles that are separated by another particle what i mean here is this if you are directly exposed to heat or your body you will feel the heat more than somebody standing in between you and the source of heat the person will act as a shield do you understand that now so surface area is actually the area available for chemical reaction to take place so Fine particles, small sized particles, the smaller the size of the reactant particles, the larger the surface area. Do not be deceived here because when we talk about surface area, some might be deceived. If we have reactant particles of this size plus another one of this size, then we have the, the same reactant but the size of the particles are here. In this case, the rate of reaction will be faster in B because B have larger surface area. What I mean here is that if you pour an acid on this particle, most of them will be exposed to the acid. But if you pour an acid on this particle, what happens is that any of these reactants that is inside, the acid will not touch it. It will, not, it will only touch those particles on the surface. Do you understand that now? That is why powdered, fine powder, gives faster rates of reaction than lumps this is where they ask you question a lump of limestone and a powdered limestone the reaction rates will be more in the powdered limestone then bringing this in reality if you put yam in your mouth without you chewing it the enzyme tyrolene will only have have its contact on those molecules of yam on the surface then what do you do to increase the surface area you now chew while you are chew chewing and turning you are exposing more of the yam that's the starch molecules exposing them to be attacked by the enzyme in the saliva which will mix it so that digestion will be very very fast so chewing is a mechanism of increasing surface area grinding anything increases the surface area of that coming to pyrotechnics in fireworks the more fine powder you have among the fuel and the oxidizing agents the faster burnings the more note it will even produce if you confine them all together for example if you have the aluminium powder you are producing uh, actually 
maybe you want to produce flash powder you check for flash powder production on this channel i've done that video about some years ago on the production of flash powder the powder that gives us a very bright light a mixture of magnesium powder and aluminum powder and then oxidizing agent you just watch that video to know the proportions and where to apply them it, they are also applied in explosives so in pyrotechnics and explosives if the surface area of the powder the fuel that's the aluminum is small meaning i don't grind it maybe i use aluminum foil fold it many places and then bring it in contact with the oxidizing agent if you ignite this it will not burn but when you get the aluminium which is the fuel in a finer and smaller size particles then if you mix them together they will react faster so the finer and smaller size particles the larger the surface area so why will increase in surface area increase the rate of reaction because it will increase more surface available for reactant particles to be in contact for more collisions to occur and the more the collisions the more the effective collisions the higher the rates of chemical reactions so surface area has been settled now to give a test question you in your exam they might not take this factor separately in some cases they will join them it will ask you which of the following we have the fastest rate of reaction. Option A, magnesium powder, magnesium powder, and 0 0.5 mole per dm cube HCl. That's molarity. Then B says magnesium ribbon and 0 0.5 mole HCl. Then C says magnesium powder and 1.0 mole HCl. The option D says magnesium ribbon and 1.0 mole HCl. Which of these will have the fastest rate of reaction? Which of them will have the highest rate of reaction? If you check this, we are asking you question based on surface area and then concentration. Do you understand that now? So you check what I taught you. The higher the concentration, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is lower than 1 and 1. So you check your answer between C and D because of the higher concentration. Then check surface area. Powder have larger surface area than ribbon. Magnesium ribbon is in form of this. Of course, I use it here on this channel also. You do yourself a favor to watch many experimental videos on chemistry here. But the powder is like this, very fine particles. Very, very fine particles. So the powder have larger surface area. So we will check the one that is in powder with higher concentration, which is option C. So the correct answer is option C. Uh, in most cases, the questions will connect these factors, not separate. Right can also affect the rate of chemical reaction. It can also affect the chemical kinetics at a stage. Such reactions that light affects the rates is called a photochemical reaction. Examples is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Then photosynthesis is a very common naturally occurring photochemical reaction. The higher the rates or the higher the light intensity, the rate will become more faster, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. Then, the reaction between HCl, or reaction between hydrogen gas and chlorine gas to form HCl, is also a photochemical reaction. Then the reaction between, uh, the reaction between methane and chlorine, in the formation of chloromethane, is also a photochemical reaction. If you mix chlorine gas and methane, and bring a bright burning magnesium ribbon to it, automatically it will explode. So the reaction between, that's the chlorination of methane is a photochemical reaction. The rate is slower when we have diffused light, but faster and more vigorous and gets out of control in a bright sun light. And also some halides, some uh, silver halides, of course. The silver halides is also a photochemical reaction because when you expose uh, silver compounds it decomposes to release 
silver metal and it happens only when we have enough light so these reactions are called photochemical reaction the higher the intensity of light the faster the rate of such reaction even in the dark if you mix chlorine and methane and bring a bright burning magnesium it will explode is a, an entertaining and a dangerous experiment to carry out. So light affects the rate of chemical reaction, but not every chemical reaction. Special groups of reaction called photochemical reaction. Now to wrap it up, I've told you that rate is measured by measuring the amount in terms of mass or volume per unit time it is formed. And rate of reaction is the speed of reaction, which is directly proportional to the decrease in concentration of the reactant or to increase in concentration of the product is the amount converted, the amount of product, the amount of product produced per time, and the amount of reactant converted per time. And these are the factors that alters the rate of chemical reaction. These factors alters the rate of chemical reaction by altering actually the activation energy and also the number of effective collisions and then the energy content of the reactant particles. Then remember that. For concentration, if you talk about concentration, you can also talk about pressure for gases. But pressure, increase in pressure have no effect for solid and liquid reactants. The higher the concentration, the higher the rate of chemical reaction. And this is why substances will burn more vigorous in pure hydrogen than in air. Because air is a mixture of gases, there is lesser concentration of oxygen in the air. But if you bring a substance close to pure oxygen, it burns faster and more vigorous because there is more collision, there is more pure, pure oxygen molecules are coming in contact with the material burning, increasing this reaction. You can see that in that reaction between magnesium ribbon and the oxygen as demonstrating when i remove the magnesium ribbon i hold it it is outside burning with air it is not vigorous. but when i insert it into that uh, uh, that uh, flask that's a that's your uh, uh, conical flask it is releasing oxygen and it burns more faster so thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and share this video this is Sir majesty i cannot do without you and i love you so much bye for now Thank you.